Did you hear about Sam? Someone dared him to drink a cup of grapeseed oil and his knee exploded. Omega-6s, sunflower oil, safflower oil, grapeseed oil, pumpkin seed oil, almond oil, all these things, we are being led to believe that they are absolutely going to cause all kinds of issues when it comes down to an inflammatory response in our body. Look, let me get this right out on the table first and foremost. Okay, I am guilty of fear-mongering surrounding omega-6s in the past, but when you start looking at the research, you realize that omega-6s are coming in like from all angles with our diet. Okay, we're not gonna just completely get rid of omega-6s, but we have to look at the research and how they work because a lot of the research will lead us to believe that if we have any amount of omega-6s, we are just triggering inflammation within our body. But you have to ask yourself the question, don't you think your body has the ability to deal with things that are gonna come in from our diet naturally? I mean, our body has the ability to deal with things like alcohol, like a pure toxin, okay? Yet we consume seed oils and we just self-destruct. Okay, so let me get this out again. I do strongly believe that we should be skewed as much towards omega-3s as possible. I think when it comes down to docosahexaenoic acid in the brain, when it comes down to uh, cell fluidity and how cells communicate with one another, I, I think they're superior, okay? But I do want to clear some things up. So where this all comes from, comes from something called linoleic acid. Linoleic acid is the fat that you get from most seed oils and most nuts. If linoleic acid was as bad as some people make it seem, we would never be able to consume any nuts because like almonds have a bunch of linoleic acid, right? Okay, well what ends up happening is these linoleic acids convert into what are called arachidonic acids. And arachidonic acids are more of the problem because arachidonic acids are like sort of the fundamental baseline for what are called eicosanoids. Okay, eicosanoids build things like prostaglandins. They build leukotrienes. Now, prostaglandins are what are called inflammatory mediators that can signal inflammation to go But what people forget is there's also other prostaglandins that quell inflammation. I'll explain how this whole response works in just a minute. Hey, after this video, do check out Thrive Market. Okay, if you are watching what you're eating and you're just trying to make better moves with your body and better moves overall, then I would definitely recommend they're an online membership based grocery store. Okay, so you go, you log on, you can sort by what kind of foods you want. Let's say I want gluten free options, check that box. Let's say I want uh, vegan options, check that box. Maybe I want paleo, check that box. And it filters them so you can go shopping the way that you really want to with a couple clicks of a button. They're a huge sponsor on this channel. They have been for four years. They're amazing. And because they're an awesome sponsor, that link down below will save you 25% off of your first order, but also get you a free gift. So you definitely want to check out Thrive Market. So that link is down below in the description and a big thank you to them and a thank you to you for supporting the brands that keep this channel alive. So what happens is the more of a specific kind of fat, like an omega-3 or an omega-6 that we consume, the more that that fat makes up what is called our phospholipid bilayer, okay, in the membrane of a cell. So someone that consumes a bunch of omega-3s is going to have an omega-3 bilayer, or largely skewed that way, and vice versa with omega-6s. The issue that we face is in the Western world, over 7% of the calories that we take in are coming in from polyunsaturated fats that are omega-6s. And then when you look at a lower carb, higher fat diet, the percentage of calories coming from omega-6s is astronomical. So that's where the problem arises. It's not with just the general consumption of them, it's with the over consumption of them. But we'll talk about that in a minute too. Let's talk about how inflammation works surrounding this really quick. Okay, if you have inflammation, what happens is you have a rush of blood flow, an increase of blood flow to a given area, respective area. Okay, then you also have uh, vascular permeability, which allows particles, larger particles, to seep through because there's inflammation or there's increased blood flow. Well, that signals white blood cells to come to that area, which signals uh, chemical mediators, which signals more inflammatory mediators. Inflammatory mediators such as prostaglandin or such as leukotrienes. Now these mediators, just like the name implies, they can mediate things one way or the other. They see that inflammation is beginning, so they mediate to bring it up. But it's also the job of mediators to understand when inflammation is getting too much or to be too much and they quell it, okay? If we did not have inflammatory mediators to quell the inflammatory response, we would turn into, well, we'd be like Sam who drank the cup of grapeseed oil. The issue that we face is that arachidonic acid, okay, the potential downstream like result of linoleic acid 
is the building block for eicosanoids like prostaglandins. So the theory there is simple. More arachidonic acid means more prostaglandin E2 means more of the just or less of an attenuated inflammatory response and more of just fueling the fire. That makes sense. But there's some misconceptions. Okay, so if we look at the study that was published in the British Medical Journal, this is the big flagship one that people reference all the time. Okay, they found that when they replaced saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat from omega-6s, it increased the risk of cardiovascular disease. That is where this all kind of started, if you ask me. Like that, that journal is referenced all the time on YouTube. But then if you look at like the Sydney Diet Heart Study and you look at some of the flaws in that one, they even admitted, they saw, wait a minute, we were adding a bunch of omega-6s, but we didn't account for the fact that the omega-6s we were adding were actually trans fats. They had like safflower, oil, margarine. Come on, if you are a veteran of this channel, trans fats lead to visceral fat. Trans fats are inflammatory. Trans fats we can all agree on, I think. I think there's no like butting heads on that. Stuff's not good. Okay, so in some of these studies, we're like, oh, maybe it's not a fair assessment. We were looking at inflammatory trans fats and grouping them in with just general omega-6s. Okay, well, let's take a further look. Journal of the American Heart Association, same issue, trans fats. Okay, well, let's keep going. I guess we have to look if linoleic acid actually does increase inflammation. Okay, now there's some indirect things and when I get towards the end of this video, I'm going to summarize this in some points and some takeaways because I'm not just like negating things that I've said about omega-6s in the past. I still stand firm on a lot of that. I just wanna propose newer evidence in real research that's coming out. There was a study that was published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism that found that there was no dose-dependent relationship between linoleic acid consumption and arachidonic acid. Remember, ARA, arachidonic acid, is the real problem. The linoleic acid is the proposed like early stage of that, okay? They even went all the way up to having people consume 551% of their baseline, like so 551% more linoleic acid than baseline, and there was no change in arachidonic acid. That's interesting. So that implies that, okay, well, we could just have as much linoleic acid as we wanted to, and it wouldn't really trigger an issue. Not necessarily the case, because there's a huge but here. Okay, omega-6s are not just linoleic acid. We have arachidonic acid, we have gamma alpha linoleic acid, gamma linoleic acid, but when supplementing arachidonic acid or supplementing gamma linoleic acid, there was an increase in the amount of ARA, arachidonic acid, in that phospholipid bilayer. So the cell membrane did absolutely become more arachidonic acid rich, which definitely could imply that there is just, it's a ticking time bomb for inflammation, right? So maybe it matters what kind of omega-6s you are taking in. So if you look at the image that's on the screen right now, this is very important, okay, you can see that linoleic acid needs something called delta-6 desaturase to turn into arachidonic acid. That is called a rate-limiting step. If we do not have enough delta-6 desaturase, we don't necessarily convert LA into ARA. Who's to say that I don't have more delta-6 desaturase available than you? So here's where we get into bioindividuality. Okay, now I'm going to speculate purely here. Perhaps epigenetics and genetics play a role here too. Someone that lives in Scandinavia that consumes a ton of omega-3s and not a lot of omega-6s, one could probably argue that maybe they have less natural inherent delta-6 desaturase. I don't know, maybe I'm totally wrong, but I'm just making a guess here. So maybe they don't deal with them as much, but maybe people that live in regions where they consume a lot of seeds, maybe regions of Africa where they consume a lot of seeds and nuts or things like that, maybe they have more to be able to convert it, or maybe they have less. Who knows, the point is, there's bioindividuality there. <laughs> there is some sparse research out there that takes a look at uh, direct arachidonic acid supplementation and saying that, oh, well, even when we supplement ARA, there's no increase in eicosanoids. Okay, a lot of those are cultured studies and petri dish studies, so they don't really, we can look at them and we can reference them, but they're not true human studies that we can really look at. Then we look at the anti-inflammatory piece, because this is funny, this is like how I opened this video, like our bodies are pretty capable of adapting. And when we consume, let's say you go and you have a handful of almonds, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say your body knows to not just trigger a cascade of inflammation as a result, right? As a matter of fact, there's evidence that some of those omega-6s that come from the almonds could actually play a role in the anti-inflammatory mediation. There's a study that was published in the journal Cytokine that found that prostaglandins, the same things that are always you know, held to this high standard of being inflammatory, they actually induced an anti-inflammatory effect against 
lipopolysaccharides. So lipopolysaccharides are inflammatory things that can leak through our gut into our bloodstream and actually induced a tumor necrosis factor alpha response to mediate that. My point in saying that is that it turns out that somehow prostaglandins can actually be anti-inflammatory too. Again, that is a cultured study, so it doesn't tell us everything, right? There's a lot of other factors. What happens in a direct Petri dish is not exactly a direct correlation of what's gonna happen with all these other confounding factors in the human body. So let's kind of summarize what the actual issue is, because I still stand firm that omega-3s are good. No one is saying omega-3s are bad. Okay, I mean, I think there probably are some people. Okay, but here's the deal. Omega-6s and omega-3s still compete for the same conversion enzyme and utilization in the body. If we consume so much omega-3, then we're not gonna consume as much omega-6, but that's probably not an issue. If we consume so much omega-6 and not enough omega-3, then we run into this like hardly utilizing omega-3s. One of these things that these studies haven't really looked at is the cell fluidity piece, right? Omega-3s improve the phospholipid bilayer to, be, to have more cell fluidity, okay? That membrane fluidity is very important for cells to be able to communicate with one another. So omega-3s, in theory, help cells kind of communicate and be more flexible to respond to things better. So again, omega-3s versus the rigidity that comes along with omega-6 phospholipid bilayers or arachidonic acid phospholipid bilayers are probably still better for communication. That's why brain cells, that's why brain responds so well with omega-3s, right? That cell fluidity, that membrane fluidity is so important in the brain, okay? You're not going to get docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, from an omega-6, okay? You, you might be able to maybe pull some data that you're gonna get a small amount, but you might get a little bit of eicosapentaenoic acid from alpha-linoleic acid, but you're not going to get what you need to actually support brain function because so much of the brain is comprised of docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, which we're getting from fish oil or algal oil or things like that. So we run into that issue. So what you have to really pay attention to is if you are having omega-6s in your diet, it's not the end of the world, but we also have to make sure we're balancing with omega-3s so that we're not so skewed one way or the other, okay? I guess it kind of comes down to, hmm, who would have ever thought a balanced diet? Maybe balancing your fats is not a bad thing, but skewing them slightly towards omega-3s. I don't think it's realistic to ask of you to consume more omega-3s than omega-6s, okay? Unless you are in Finland, and you're, which is awesome because you have really cool saunas out there, like you're probably consuming more omega-6s than 3s, so I don't want you freaking out, okay? I will stand once again behind the fact that when you see a lot of like sunflower oils, you see these omega-6s, they are still a PUFA, that sounds funny, APUFA. Sounds like an interesting name, but polyunsaturated fatty acid, P-U-F-A. They are fragile. When they are on a shelf, the chance of them going rancid is pretty high. So the rancidity plays a role. Rancid oils, rancid seed oils are a problem. Just like even with olive oil, which is largely monounsaturated fat, it's in dark bottles, kept in dark areas, so it doesn't go rancid. If you're eating Ritz chips or Ritz cookies or Ritz makes crackers, right? I don't know. I don't eat them. The point is, if you're eating a bunch of those that have a bunch of sunflower oil or soybean oil and they're sitting on a shelf at 80 degrees, come on, okay? The fats aren't designed to handle that. So don't freak out and demonize the heck out of omega-6s. Be balanced and try to get omega-3s so you get skewed a little bit more that way. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.